Okay, here we go. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. We are at the Goodwood County Ed District Board meeting. It is Wednesday, June 21st, 7 p.m. The River Bluff Education Center. Um, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda as listed on our papers here? So moved. A motion by Jerry. Second. Second by Bob. Any discussion or questions about the agenda? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed same sign. Motion carries. All right, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, we have the approval of the May 25th board minutes. I did notice in there that um, it mentions that we changed the um, Sherry's evaluation to, to do that during the open meeting, but in the meeting minutes, it says closed session. Okay, okay. okay. So thank you. Yeah, change, do that. Anybody have any other um, comments about the, um, Minutes from last month, All right? Um, we'll come back we'll, to the claims um, at the end here. So staff updates. We've had, um, we're doing a lot of hiring, um, as you can see. Um, I don't think I need to go through these individually. Um, we're filling a lot of the positions. Some are just uh, people that we had to let go earlier on because of licensure and are not bringing back. Um, we do have a leave of absence that we are now going to be working on. Um, overall, we're doing well. Um, we have three itinerant positions we are currently working on, and then my districts are probably still short six special education teachers together. Um, so, just an update for you. I have a question. Yeah. Just because we talked about this at our board meeting last night. When you have resignations, and I know there aren't any on here, but is there an exit interview? Yes. Okay. We do exit. I, I've done exit interviews with all employees for maybe eight years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. Um, I noticed that um, we hired um, Maddie Green. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. It is. Glad you got her. Okay. Um, any questions about the hires or the resignation? Okay, or I guess um, give the resignation. Marilyn, are you okay to approve those? Or those look good? Yeah. So far? Okay. All right, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Motion by Jason. Second. Second by Therese. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Don't believe we have any public input tonight with no one attending the meeting. So we'll move on to reports and communication. Jack? All right. Um, so we're going to start looking at this current year. So this is the budget as of May 31st. I'll blow this up a little bit. Uh, so as of May 31st, we had received 13 million. $322.24, or about 73.9% of our revised budget, compared to 70.4 and 88%. Um, you can see we are between the two years. There is quite a gap to the second year, um, as the bonds are still hanging on there for one more year. Um, next year, though, we won't have that bond sale uh, skewing the percentages in the second prior year. Um, you can see where we are head on is federal. We just, we're drawing that down as we spend it. We must be spending in a little different manner um, than in the prior two years. Um, not drastically ahead, that it is concerning. But just a little bit. Expenditure wise, we've expended $13,180,182. 72.4% of our revised budget compared to 71.3 and 38.9. Um, again, the bond sale is skewing that second prior year. Otherwise, we are starting to line up closely with our prior year numbers. Are there any questions on the budget report? All right, moving along, um, 
We have cash flow going through the end of this fiscal year. We'll look at cash flow for next fiscal year with the preliminary budget. We are not looking to have a cash flow shortage um, in the next two weeks. Also in there is the bank reconciliation for your information. Uh, I don't have it pulled up, but then you can see that um, the May bank record is done and our bank ties to our books. Any questions? Uh, prior month. Thank you. We will move on to Reading Center updates. We have Jess Whitcomb here to provide that update for us. Um, she was also able to give that update to our superintendents who met today. We met with um, both current superintendents and the incoming. So this is your third round of this for some of you. So I will skip some of the um, first ones. Jackie, if you could scroll down. This is just our update from our reading center and our right there, if you can stop. Um, so if you remember, our goal for the reading center was to increase uh, reading scores across Goodhue County um, in the six districts with our pilot being in KW. They did, they definitely went up. Um, they didn't go, Weston is never satisfied, um, and he wishes it was 95%, but we went from the, if you can go down two more, this is recognition of the teachers, um, but we did, we went um, from being uh, the lowest in the, out of the six districts to now second, um, and if you can see that, you look at that green line up there, yeah, the blue <laughs> is an average of the GCD districts, and you can see that that is trending up. Mm -hmm. um, but that's where KW ended up above the average. So that's what we're looking. The the purple at the very top um, is the highest of the districts. It would it goes between a couple, um, and then the lowest is that orange. And so where we all come together is the blue. So we're hoping to make that trend up, but where we're putting time and effort into our pilot right now is K and then expanding to first grade next year. So we'll continue it with kindergarten and expand to first grade and Kenny Wanamako. Um, then if you can go down again, one more. Keep going, sorry. Um, one, the, go back to that one for one second, Jackie. So um, <clears throat> at the end of the KW pilot, 62% of the kindergarten students um, met proficiency um, and there are national and um, state dyslexia rates, um, and they are below um, the dyslexia risk factors. So that's that's a really important piece for us. Um, and I know you got I think you got an expanded version of, of this report, but we're really excited to see that data. I was able to get in and observe it. Um, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's important to know that this is on top of what's happening in the classroom. So, so this is not a core reading program. No. This is a, a an intervention, a an intervention, a supplement to that. No, it's about 15 minutes a day. Uh, and that's <laughs> having that impact. So with that, then Weston has been meeting with the kindergarten teachers. Can you keep going up? Um, and so talking to them about how can we improve, that's the point of the pilot, is how do we improve the curriculum on how to best use it for teacher usability, and then what might be missing when we look at the subtests and break it down. Um, one of the things that Weston shared, I, I'm guessing he shared at uh, the board meeting as well, but if we look at just letter sounds and we break that down from Fastbridge, there was actually 87% of the kids proficient in letter sounds which is a huge improvement. Um, and that was where we felt like it, the program was the strongest, but in word segmenting, that was a gap. And so he goes right back. This is what I love so much about working with Weston and being able to work with the person who wrote the curriculum is now he goes back, he edits the word segmenting part, and then we change it for next year. And so that's the beauty of using his program, I think, is that the teachers go, well, this is missing and he adds it. Um, versus having a bigger box company where you don't necessarily have that flexibility. So then they're also talking about making adjustments to the, their actual literacy block and West, Weston being a part of that conversation and a resource for them um, in looking. This is something that he kind of put together to talk about what percentage 
uh, your of your time should be writing or reading or spelling. Um, so the teachers kind of have that gauge and also possibly add some minutes to their literacy block just based on research um, so that they can have some support on how to structure that. Did I miss anything there? I don't think so. Okay. And then as you keep going down, uh, so next steps, GCD wide. Uh, one of the things we brought this to our special education leadership team, uh, and there was interest in adding this program for foundational skills across the county in our special education uh, uh, resource rooms and minutes. And we're working per district on that, depending on what the kids need and what their IEPs say uh, that they would need either reading or math, but we'll utilize this and pilot it with our special education students to make sure that it meets their needs as well. Uh, and then it will be kindergarten and first grade next year in KW and then special education GCD wide. Um, we are still in conversations with other schools about do you want to add this to your general education programs? They're looking at a lot of different things with the READ Act coming out and looking at legislation and what's required of them. Uh, so we're in conversations with all of your superintendents and all of your principals, and there might be more to come on that. Uh, it just depends on what they're comfortable with. A lot of you have adopted new uh, reading curriculum and so some of them are wanting to make sure that that's there first before they, they layer they layer anything on top so it's not a no from anybody it's just we're working to know the best way to do it so it doesn't feel like another thing it feels like uh, filling a gap which is what I felt like KW teachers asked for and filled it versus putting another thing on top for teachers so Weston has also gone through um, the letters training he's been a trainer um, and so that will be an advantage to us. Some of the districts are considering using Weston, uh, the dyslexia specialist that is required of districts. So all districts will have to hire someone called a dyslexia specialist. Um, we can leverage that from the cooperative. So you wouldn't all need to hire that position. Um, you might still choose to do that, but some of the superintendents have approached me to say, does that work? to answer that, and it is yes. The bottom line is we want to raise these reading scores. So we want all of our teachers implementing their base curriculum with fidelity, and then we want to get them some research-based interventions like this um, for kids that need more support. And one of the things Weston and I are doing, along with letters training and connecting with teachers that are doing that to show them uh, Weston's curriculum and how that connects to the letters training. We're also being trained in their core curriculum. Um, so being trained in Amplify, being trained in what you guys are actually using in your districts to also be a resource to tie that um, and hopefully help to fill those gaps or show where resources and teachers need that in stuff that you guys already have in your districts. The letters training is really good to foundationally to understand um, reading, but it doesn't have it doesn't have the work the teachers will then need to do. They still need to create that or um, leverage what they've now learned with their curriculum. I think Weston puts it really well. It's like yes. they give you a template, um, but he gives you the lesson plan. So I think that that's the easiest way to, to describe that. And letters training is phonics instruction. I guess or is it it, it's all of the science of reading, which includes phonics instruction, um, but it's those different components that are put together. The Scarborough rope, they go back to over and over and over again, that comprehension and all of those strategies that we use. And um, that's where Weston gets really frustrated because all of this research has been since the 80s and it's kind of coming back around like, like education does, but they have packaged it in a way that I think teachers and, and administrators are gonna be able to utilize it and they're funding it, um, which is like the biggest deal, the biggest deal. Yeah. So many things without the money they for training the staff need to be able to do the job that they want to do. So it's exciting. I think it's getting to a point, a tipping point now where teachers are, there are teachers who went through it and now those are the ones that are saying, yeah, you should too. So it's getting to that point where everybody's wanting it. The game changer, I finished mine five minutes ago. It was 
I'm done. It's worth it, but it's a lot. So they say thank you to your educators that are going to it. A lot. Any questions? Thank you for that. That's very helpful. Great, great um, information. So hopefully we'll have better news in the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, social worker fund. So the Green County Child and Family Co um, Collaborative had ARP funds remaining after they've gotten through their granting programs. And so they have provided um, a bucket that's at the county for your school social workers to access. And they have also um, provided a bucket for them to use individually in their schools. So overall, they gave us $9,244, not a lot, but they can use this to help students. Um, and we've allocated it out by ADM. They can access this. Um, so for instance, in Cannon Falls, it's $3,800 and they can access it for a coat for a child or whatever those needs might be. So it's just a little extra bump for those needs that they see um, first and foremost in our districts. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, that has been shared with them and I'm excited anytime I think it's going help like that. So I wanted to share um, that the collaborative had done that. All of your superintendents sit on the collaborative. Um, it's a, they are a required position by the bylaws. And we meet quarterly. You know what the how the and how much background do you have on the collaborative? None. None. Um, so I will put that on my next board agenda. But your staff out there in your districts do random time studies sent to us by the government, and based on the answers to those time studies, funds flow to us. So I will give you more details. And then we use those to pay for social workers um, and, and many different programs. And so I can um, give you a list of those. I can show you kind of the budget and share that information with you and exactly who's doing those time studies at our next meeting. As I was saying that, I'm glad hmm, that we haven't talked about that. Great. Um, we'll move on to the unemployment insurance update for this summer. So as you know, as of May 28th, our hourly employees could apply for unemployment. Um, they will receive all or partial unemployment or none based on whether they are offered a like job and salary hours from us during the summer. Um, so we have gotten, I think the last time I checked, 30 some applications. Yes, we're over 30. Um, and I know your districts are also getting them. One of the questions we have for them is, you hire paras during the school year, we probably hire them during the summer. And how is Dean collecting that information? So there's going to be a lot of um, time from who's ever doing your payroll and HR on this matter. It is mind boggling when you get those letters from Dean, it's a 10 day turnaround and it's gonna keep coming um, as they go in and out of work. I think, um, over time, we might want to just assign um, the people that we, number of positions we know we're going to have for our targeted services or ESY to more full year. There's a cost either way though. So I think we need to brainstorm about what we want to do. Some of the paras want their summer um, and don't want to be offered employment. So there's a lot going on with that. I just, I want you to stay informed, but I wanted you to know that we have received those letters, we are processing them, and we'll be working with your districts if there are any crossover situations. The other piece of this is the legislature did set aside funding. Um, there is skepticism among those of us in un uh, education, whether it will be enough to last this whole summer. Um, they have said we cannot use levy dollars like we do with regular unemployment to fund this, and we can't use special education funding to fund this. Um, to fund the shortfall. So what the shortfall will be remains unseen because we don't know who will apply. Um, they have to apply. They have to qualify. We cannot tell staff if they qualify or not. We can just tell them to go apply. Deed um, determines if they're qualified if they qualify or not. Um, so you said we cannot use levy dollars like other unemployment, and then you said we have one more thing. There is there is a set aside amount for special, special education, education. Yeah. paraprofessionals. Yep. 
So our special education paraprofessionals that are on unemployment wants this first bucket of money. So the legislature and the people that wrote this believed that they have set aside enough for two years of this. Most of us believe we're gonna maybe make it through this first summer. Yeah. So then there's gonna be this huge shortfall. Once we hit that shortfall, our business managers and payroll will have extra codes mm -hmm. to be able to code those special ed paras to special ed state. The problem with that is it's going to push up our maintenance of effort. And then if that goes away because now we can levy, we still have to spend that amount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of issues with this. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's one of those, we don't know, we can, we can brainstorm all the issues, but we don't know all the issues until we've gone through with the summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, will it come out of their general fund? Mm -hmm. So, our general fund? They're your, for your employees. For our, right, uh, right, right. Do you see this at some point? You know, you talked about maybe making your employees full year employees. Do you see that this could maybe, if districts are not making full year employees, do you see this? becoming a problem I don't with know. hiring? If you make them full year employees, it's a cost to you too. Right. So I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, the quandary right now is do we pay them to work in the summer or do we pay half their salary for them not to work in the summer? Because that's what unemployment pays is half of your salary. Mm -hmm. And it might be certain jobs like our building secretaries. I mean, honestly, we would have work here for them. Right. Um, but we wouldn't have work for all those pairs. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me bring people in to find work for them. How many weeks do we have extended school programs? Depends on the district. Three to four. Okay. And then JCD, do you run your own extended school year? Are those we hire staff? all the staff that support all of your students with special needs during the summer. Okay. So if, um, if you have students enrolled in your targeted services, we're hiring staff for that, um, that are uh, students with special needs. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we, we run all of the ESY programming for all of your districts and we hire the teachers in Paris for that. Okay, and how about students who go to school here? They, uh, they're in, they, some of them come here, and it depends on the student, uh, probably most of them come here. Okay. We have older students, so we have fewer and fewer that have extended school year. Okay. Other questions? It's kind of like watching them let's go out on the lake. We're all going to take bets on when that money's going to. Mm -hmm. We're just, there's too many unknowns. So, all right, move on to old business. Um, unpaid lunch balance challenge. So, um, we have a cabinet meeting coming up on the 26th where we're going to come up with our plan for this. <laughs> Um, it's actually um, just over $1,300. So not as much as we thought. Um, some of those bounces came in at the last minute. So I just wanted to not, I didn't want to not put it on the agenda and have you think I had forgotten about it. I haven't forgotten about it. Um, the cabinet is coming together next week for a plan. All right, new business, um, the preliminary budget. Here is a look at our preliminary budget for next year. Um, we are looking to break even for the most part in our restricted areas. So area learning center, basic skills program, uh, LTFM and medical assistance with a decrease of $82,000 in our general fund. Uh, as you recall, there are a number of things we take out of our general fund each year to benefit our members. One of them is um, fast, bridge assessments. fast bridge assessments, which is about $40,000 every year. The other is um, when we had a shortfall on this building, we took out an equipment lease. We pay the premium or the payment on that equipment lease out of our general fund as well instead of levying them back to our districts. That's about $80,000 a year. Um, so that is why we see a decrease in our fund balance. Uh, as our expenditures have gone up, our percentage of fund balance has gone down. We'll be at about 5.5%. Our fund balance policy does say we should be up 
in year seven. Um, so we are we are out of compliance with our fund balance policy, but that is um, there's nothing audit wise that will be done to us. There's nothing the state will be that'll be done with us. We are just out of compliance with our own policy. Questions on the budget. So how do we? What are you know? We talked about some things last month that we're doing that's going to impact general fund and our fund balance is down to 5%. So what are our, what are our recovery plans? Are we I think we long term have, with? Yeah, we need to get some trend data on the area of learning centers and how that's going to go. Um, before I can answer that question, so we have a brand new funding mechanism that just started. So we'll have one year of data on that. We're going to next year with our second to see if we're going to be running at a loss um, in that program. That would cause us to do. We would need to do more drastic, drastic things. things. Um, right now, our fund balance percentage is going down uh, because our expenditures are going up. So that makes the percentage when we get lower. It's it's only going to go farther down with uh, employee so, benefits and. Right, yes. and like we that. knew when so. we choose when we chose to put um, the oh, the but building piece on here that our fund balance was going to drop each year, and that at some point we would be faced with this, um, and that was a decision to do that until we could no longer do that, and um, we could pass that through. We have extra levy dollars now, so there's there are options for that. We don't necessarily want to do that. We'll have to explore all the different pieces. Yeah, I just think we should look further and far enough ahead. The other piece is we could not do the sub grants back and um, do some shifting. That would be another option. The other thing um, we have not changed since we moved into this building is we charge an administrative fee and an operating fee, and then we give you a sub grant back in an equal amount. So it's a net zero to the member general fund. Um, we haven't changed the dollar amounts for those. I believe the administrative fee is $121,000 spread over child count. And the operating fee is $30 per ADM. Um, so the $121,000 has not changed in probably six or seven years. And the $30 per ADM is steadily declining as our members decline. And we're getting less and less money from that every year um, to cover our custodial, our all of that. So more and more of that is having to come out of the general fund that it has in the past. Um, so how does 5RO play into that piece of it? Because obviously it, we have external funding coming in now. Mm -hmm. So we need to relook at some of the... So it's in its own silo. It's in its own silo and five RO, we break even net zero every year. We don't we have we not don't tried to generate a profit on five that. So some of the we give it all back to our districts. So what I'm saying is some of the funding that's produced, maybe we need to look at it would be an option that for the rebate that. essentially. Mm -hmm. If yep. that's and obviously look at areas for efficiency and whatnot. But yep. no, I think it's worth a discussion now versus mm -hmm. yeah. we wish we had a year from now. Right. Yeah. Kind of yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So some of those conversations we'll have to start having. The other conversations we'll have to start having our instructional coaches. We've been funding them with ESSER dollars. We're coming to the end of that. How are we going to continue to fund them? Um, more conversations to have through the next school year. Mm -hmm. We strongly. The, this board historically has strongly believed in instructional coaches, mm -hmm. just like the fast bridge system. And so knowing that some of our registers um, didn't feel as strongly about those positions, like Weston, um, we wanted them to be a, a very cost effective. So coaches have been zero most years. I think there was a year where it was like $10,000 for the coach for the entire year. We covered the rest of it. So there's things like that that we may have to look at. As we, as we start looking now at 
24, 25. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank so you. In those conversations, I'll start those in the superintendent meetings. Yeah. Um, we'll brainstorm there and then come back to you. Thank you. Is there anything you want to give you plus? Yep. Um, just also for your information, the bills are in there. These are staff we hire that are working in your district at least part of their time. Um, you can see their fiscal FTE there. All of them are in there for every district, um, just for transparency. Yep. So again, when your districts get these bills, um, you can look to this far, far column and say, yes, we in Cannon Falls are paying that salary with state special ed dollars. Because okay, we tell you the funding source there. now. State special ed doesn't cover 100% of the cost. Um, but you know, this is what I do when I'm back with it. Uh, you get compensatory ed that you can use to cover your EL teachers. You can see that um, this, this is the cost of the building, the lease on the building. You lease your taxpayers, the money comes into you, you flow it to us. So don't ever look at this number here and think that's coming out of our general fund. There's lots of different funding sources here. It's important to look at that. Mm -hmm. um, so this number here, on, I just have can follow up. And this number I get right off your lease levy certification that each district did last winter. So it matches exactly. Uh, these are the two fees I talked about. We give you some grant for both of them currently. And that's another, we are, I believe, the only cooperative in the state that doesn't have a fee. A membership fee. a membership fee um, all the other zed hiawatha valley they all charge their members a membership fee that doesn't get subgranted to them we've never done that um but it's another thing we could consider what type of fee do we look at or is there a is there a constant among oh no it varies widely for instance it could you know, be Zed's, like, I don't know Zed's. I, I'm just getting my feet wet there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know HBEDS either yet. Mm -hmm. I think Zed's was around $40 a student. A student. Um, the intermediates are higher than that. Yes. If, if that was something we were considering, we would be gathering that information so that it's just like when you look at board salaries. You're not going to look at your board salaries, just yours. You're going to look at all other districts and you know make a comparison. Lots of options. Um, so that's all there for your information. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you, if it'll come up here, is the cash flow for starting July 1. Um, there are low spots in there. It doesn't look like it wants to come up. One thing about that, I don't know what you loaded for federal. Um, federal government has passed their budget, and special ed did get an increase. Yeah, I, so. I used the same as this year. So that will help this cash flow as well. We just don't know those numbers. Conservative number at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, much better to do that. No. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> um, so yeah, so here's the cash flow. Uh, the lowest is usually when we get to our lowest, which is in January, uh, January, February. Um, into March, when I expect we'll start getting those first semester uh, by our role. And I assume the 5RO billing is going decent because obviously we had to create that whole mm -hmm. billing. Um, this year we build at the halfway mark yeah. for our full time students and then the end, of, at the the end year. of the year. And you intend to do that same mm -hmm. thing? Yes. Forward. Yes. Uh, the only things I have had have been questions from non member districts on why I am sending them a bill because they don't understand um, that the student exactly. open enrolls <laughs> here and that it's not flowing through MDE. So it's a, it's a little bit of an education piece um, on that end. Do you have a document that you then just send to them explaining that? Pretty much. And then I tell them if they have questions, please get in touch with these folks at MDE that we worked with. Mm -hmm. Sure. If we were an independent school district, the money would just flow from MDE. Yeah. And so it's just teaching people that it will know we're a joint cops. Yep, and that's the student. They they think when it comes from us, it is uh, care and treatment. 
that were providing them care and treatment or some kind of um, therapy services and not that these students open enrolled here and um, things like that. But I'm it is everything. unusual for an ed district to have an online program. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. That's everything then, the budget? That's everything right. I would- I need uh, a motion. Need a motion. Oh, we do need a motion. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. do we have a motion to approve the preliminary budget? So moved. Motion by Marilyn. Second. Second by Bob. Any other questions? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, Goodyear County Health and Human Services and the Goodyear County Ed District contracts. So this is a contract that has been in place since 1990. Um, you've seen it if you've been here before each year. Um, they, uh, Goodyear County Health and Human Services works with the school districts because it's important for them to keep their students who are most at risk in the county. And so they get this money ahead of time for us for those programs, like our setting for um, early childhood, those pieces. So um, this year, they um, the amount is $560,000. They did increase it. We um, have had increases in staff wages, et cetera. Um, and I believe their board meeting is tomorrow. Um, it's this week. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just asking for approval on the Goodhue County Health and Human Services and Goodhue County Education District contracts for fiscal year 24. I just have one question. Mm -hmm. um, under insurance, it says um, enforce a liability insurance policy of not less than $1 million slash $3 million. What was the reason for the $2? Uh, one is per occurrence and the other is yeah. per year. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any questions about the contracts? I'll move to approve the Goody County Health and Human Services and Goody County Ed District contracts for fiscal year 24. We have a motion to have a second. A second. Second by Marilyn. Any other questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, the Fernbrook contracts. Yes, so we began contracting with Fernbrook maybe six years ago. Um, they provide mental health therapists here at this site. Um, so it's not the school link you have in your districts, but similar services. Um, they are here actually um, full time to work with um, the students um, that we have in our setting for programs. And this is the um, contract from them for three um, qualified mental health professionals um, and two mental health practitioners. And it's been a great addition. We also claim MA dollars on this, so we do get some of this reimbursed through third party billing. Your social workers in your districts are also going to be able to claim third party dollars. So probably not in this first year because we're going to have to do time studies and establish rates, but you will see third party dollars going up over time because of that. All right, so do we have a motion to go to the Fernbrook contract? So moved. Motion by Bob. Oh, sorry. Second by Jason. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So now we have um, the next piece is a resolution. So we'll need to do a roll call vote on this one. Um, and this is just assigning you as the Right, I don't, the, mm -hmm. the person who can okay get into the secure sense at MD. All right, any questions about that? Nope. All right, do you have a motion to approve? Mm -hmm. Motion by Therese. A second, a second, second by Marilyn. All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Jason, yes, Marilyn, yes, Jerry, yes, Therese, yes, Bob, yes, Dawn is a yes. Motion carries. All right, restricted procedures manual. We generally bring this to our districts in the fall, in August. Um, it is required to go in front of the board and we need to post it electronically in our districts and also have a paper copy available. There were a number of changes in it this year. And so um, we thought we better get in front of it. So the only, um, we have this one updated and now we're taking those updates and applying them to the other manuals. 
for instance, um, they added her, um, our littles to it. Um, so now not only students on an IEP, but also our birth to three students or preschool students would be on a family service plan. Um, seclusion is no longer, um, you cannot use it after September of 2024. So at one point it was going to be January, but they're giving us this whole next year. However, the commissioner then in the next legislative session is going to have a sunset for every grade level. So within a few years, there will no longer be seclusion. And so we um, allude to that and trying to think of, there's a lot more emphasis on positive behavioral strategies and how we're training those. So those are some changes you'll see in the map. And it takes an account the new- mm -hmm. Yep, everything's in there. It's really, if you look at the editing, I don't know if you can pull it up. There's, there's a lot of <laughs> edits in there. Any specific part? Um, it would be the manual. Um, so it's the bottom piece. The other pieces are all the different appendix. You have to show what document you're using and what your oversight committee is going to. Oh, significant disproportionality is something you have to look at in, during your oversight committee. With restricted procedures quarterly, there's a team in your district that must get together and review all of the restrictive procedures to determine if there are any patterns or things we need to change within the system. One of the new questions they'll have to ask is, is there any significant disproportionality? Are we identifying a certain group of students more than another group of students? So it's an additional question. Um, one of the things with this, when you approve it at your board level, you'll have all of the pieces except currently trained. And when we train, we send new training appendix out to each district every time we train so that that stays current. So this this is um, district what? It, it's it, per district because you have different. Um, so it is, okay. So, yep. this, so this is the GCED one and each of your superintendents will get theirs to bring to you as a board. Okay. Um, one thing that was, um, one thing I should point out uh, Where's the part about who can do research procedures? I can't see that far away. There's been some confusion on this um, across our community ed groups um, in three of our districts. In order to, so restrict this, restricted procedures and statute are only for students who have special needs. There is no such thing for gen ed students. <coughs> it doesn't mean that if a fight breaks out, a teacher couldn't step in between. You could, of course, you're going to act, okay? But this um, statute is specifically written for students with disabilities, and it calls out the very people and the only people that can actually use restrictive procedures. And that is on page, right there, page six, top of page six. Restrictive procedures may be used only by a licensed special education teacher, a school social worker, a school psych, a behavior analyst certified by the National Behavior Analyst Certification Board, a person with a master's degree in behavior analysis, other licensed education professionals, so a principal or a gen ed teacher, maybe you have someone on your crisis team that we're going to, but they have to have a Pelsby license, um, a paraprofessional under 120B, that's a highly qualified paraprofessional, or a mental health professional under section, and that's a DHS um, a law there. So your, your social workers or your mental health therapists like come from Fernbrook. They are the only people that this statute authorizes. What we didn't realize is that over the years, some of our community ed personnel, um, like in Cannon Falls, were coming to the training for their after school childcare and had, getting the complete training and thinking they could use this because we weren't, we were trained, we just didn't. And so pay attention to everyone that signed up, right? Yes. And so um, we've had to loop back to them and just say, we get it. You want behavior support. So we've offered behavior tools. We can also do the front end of CPI, which is um, de the de-escalation piece, but not the holds. So I think, I think everyone understands now. And it was just, we shouldn't have trained them before and probably gave them the wrong message. And, um, and then we found out, because I was meeting with directors from across um, the region, Rochester was also doing this. As a matter of fact, Rochester, you know, and I'm not gonna, they were, the, and people, people just, people didn't know. They didn't know what they didn't know. And so now we're we're just trying to, you know, you find out something's happening and you say, oh, we get it. We know what your intention was. Let's work on that now. We'll figure out a better plan. 
So okay. it's not just, it happens. Right. And so um, just know that we're working with them. How do you track and keep up with um, knowing that you have enough staff to cover all areas if, you know, that would require this? I mean, it, surely with the staffing crunch, you're running into, I don't have the credentialing to have somebody prepared to do this. You know, well, our to, paraprofessionals are all highly qualified and our special right. education teachers can do them. We've got our psychs. So you've got to, so you've got to know. Mm -hmm. well, we what do. about at our own individual Yeah, yeah. Schools. That's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm thinking we do. Yes, you we do break up fights. Right. Well, it's the well, you low probably low got a very I remember when yeah. I was we do. Jefferson as we do. classroom this teacher, be and this was first starting, yeah. I went to training mm -hmm. with you, and I was on the team, the crisis team. Yeah, sure. towards the end. And maybe I, I should not have been. I mean, I have no, you, you can because you're a licensed, <laughs> right. you're licensed under Pelsby, so that's okay. Right. And but crisis teams would be student support people, yes, deans. Right. We can we can train them to be part of that. Right. And I don't know how, how we would have managed it because, it because we certainly <laughs> didn't have. You know, we had two sped teachers, and nobody else was full time. So if they didn't train us who would do it yeah that is an excellent so, question all right so i am um i was looking for approval if you want more time to look at this we could approve it in our july meeting um but it's it we took our restricted procedures benefit from last year and just added all the new legal pieces so obviously you must have it in the paragraph who was because you've got strikeouts on everybody yes. that's in there. Exactly. To that paragraph now. Yeah, it's in the yeah. paragraph. I took it out of bullet points. I just thought it read better. And so I did some of that fixing too. I can make a motion to approve restricted procedures and manual. It's presented. Okay. A motion by Marilyn. We have a second. I'll second. Second by Therese. Any other questions, concerns? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. We move on to policy updates. We have two sections. Um, the one that um, they're actually in one section. Oh, did you change? There, I um, yeah, look at you. you I did. Four, it's a hybrid. Six hundred. One hundred and four. And your. Okay, so your the second system. document you have is the document from MSBA. Okay. Okay. There's the group. So that yeah, it gives you the short version of what changed. And most of the revisions are effective immediately or during this summer, okay? So, and we've never had this many changes in policies in one, from one legislative session. Um, because the revisions are largely taken word for word from the legislation, um, you can just adopt them. You could also wait. We don't have another meeting until the end of July. Some of these policies do have to get into our handbooks, which is why I at least wanted to bring it to you now. Mm -hmm. So we didn't change anything from MS from the MSBA language. Um, we use their red line, except education district, executive director, those kinds of changes. Otherwise, we stay strictly with um, the MSBA. I would like to pull out policy 102, the first one. Um, there was some language in there that I really we talked about it and I'm not comfortable with it. Um, I don't, I, honestly, I couldn't understand exactly what they meant. So um, I would like to pull that one out. And do a second reading. And second reading okay. on that. And then I honestly did not read those that were um, set for next month because I thought I had another month to do that. So I don't, I we personally do all would like to do reading. those um, as a second so, reading. Not that they need it, but I didn't. Yeah. Right. Don, what was your your concern? Can you kind of sum it up in a bullet point what your what the language was that you were concerned about? Because I I haven't read one or two. Yes, it's the um. It's it it pertains to athletics, and I know that that's not a concern here per se, but I just don't. Um, I'm, it talks about having equal opportunities for boys and girls. It honestly looks like if we have football for boys. We have to either allow girls to play football or have a football. Oh, don't we do that already? Uh, well, yes. boys think... playing volleyball. Well, right, we're heading that way, I think. And I don't think we've ever had anybody want to to turn down. Maybe we have, but I don't think we have. I know yeah. we have at least one girl playing baseball. Okay, girl playing baseball. Girl wrestlers. 
the girl wrestlers. So I'm not, I'm, this is coming up and it's. Yeah, I know they've, they've, at least at the state high school league level, they've discussed boys volleyball as a. What we don't want is mandates though, because of the cost. If you're going to make me put together a, a girls football team, right. I don't have the money. <laughs> I don't right. have the money. But I was under the understanding that it wasn't necessarily um, exact equality in football, football, volleyball, volleyball. Right. So but just if you have male five sports opportunities, right? Five yeah. male sports. Five female sports. Yeah, and the title line. Right. So what but, is the with this language, at? it's really hard to understand what the intent is. Shall I provide equal opportunity for members of each sex and to members of all races and ethnicity. This is kind of like a general, uh, I'm not discounting it. It's just this general language to make it sound that you have a policy that you're doing this already, right? I mean, we're not telling any specific race they can't join baseball. Right, that's, a, that's kind of why it's like I'm a, reading it like, you cannot tell a child they cannot participate yeah, in what, sports. Yeah. And maybe that's financial barriers. Yeah, that's that was about to say the only thing I'll stop you is money, but we're gonna right. find a way to get you in there. Right. Um, right. So and females to be but what we have to read males and females to participate in the athletic program reflects the demonstrated interest. Somebody worked overtime to overthink this, didn't they? That's just it. And you, if you have something that has loopholes, you open yourself up for problems. Um, I, I'm just not comfortable with that one. I wonder who legally, you know, it'd be nice <laughs> to have a lawyer just look at it and find the words, the, the verbiage that's going to be contradictory or, or redundant or whatever, just skimming it here, because it seems like it's awfully wordy to say the same thing. Yes. And I don't understand what we're, I mean, I do. Everybody gets a chance to play a sport. And this is just about sports, just about the athletics, right? It's not about activities, which would be interesting because it should be about the, um, the arts. Yes. It should be about, you know, we're not gonna throw somebody out of a play because they're not the right color skin. Exactly. Why isn't that included? So again, um, if you, I'm gonna steal this. MSBA really just took it right out of the statute. Okay. So I honed in on the word demonstrated. Demonstrated in the statute is now there six times. Um, let me get this a little bigger. Yeah, demonstrated. Mm -hmm. So demonstrated, isn't that weak wording? Where the opportunity for males and females to participate in the athletic program reflects the demonstrated interest in athletics of the males and females in the student body of the educational, it's word for word. Right. They, it's difficult to understand well, so what I'm getting then, at. Does yeah. that mean that, okay, let's say there are 25 girls that say, I want to be on a girls' football team. Does that mean if you have a demonstration, would that be the demonstrated interest? Or there are 10 boys that want to have volleyball. Is, does, is that what demonstrated? Is that what they mean? Right. And do we have to do that then? Right. Yeah, I don't understand the, the the use of the word demonstrated in this exactly like <laughs> I, yeah i don't want to take this down a rabbit hole i just i'm i'm just right. looking but at it like what was what was i trying to get at here to protect my district or you know my organization that i am including everybody for right. sports right. i just find it odd that they didn't include things more than just sports And there's other things we can we can discriminate in. Is Band. that something we could ask MSBA about? Oh, we could. I mean, would they? I bet by next year they'll have another writing of this. MSBA will go through the fine tooth comb and they'll rewrite the so we can policy all understand again. It. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, they're not going to rewrite them. I mean, they've written what the statute says here. Yeah, but they'll probably go through it. So we need the statute to change yeah. that. Well, yeah. the, the lawyers wrote the statute, right? I mean, they wrote this. From the view of we're going to definitely punch it home that everybody gets to play <laughs> in where in, the, in something they're demonstrating an interest in, right? That's the way it's been for a long time. I know it's like, it's you want to play football, you're going to play football, right? And if, you, if your school, wrestle, you're going to wrestle. My, if my <laughs> school financially prepared or not had 10 guys who want to play volleyball, it's yeah. going to happen, yeah. 
yeah. we're gonna we're gonna put it together. They're gonna do it after school. Some somebody's I'm gonna pitch in. I'm guessing that it. the Minnesota State High School League. But if two, if the one guy wants to play volleyball and he wants to be on the girls' volleyball team, can't tell them all. Yeah. Based on what? Isn't there boys yeah. volleyball already in the Minnesota High School League past that? Yeah. 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 So yeah. yeah. Right. right, but we can't we can't add another sport in Lake City, right? Right. The reality yeah, is right. we can't. Yeah. So is that saying that boys now can be on the girls' volleyball team, which is very wrong? I don't think so, because if Minnesota High School League has boys' volleyball, you have to, if you have 10 boys that want to play volleyball, you have to have a volleyball team for boys. You have to figure out. So. No, you don't. I don't, think, I don't know that. You don't no. have to, but somebody, some, somebody like I said, would, somebody's going to yeah. fill the gap, your, your yeah. booster club. No, or somebody. Think it's the problem is when you have the one, and yeah. I think that, I think this writing is supposed to be protecting the, the one guy who wants to play on the girls volleyball team. And I, quite frankly, I don't know that you could turn them down. I know it says girls volleyball team, but if they want to come to tryouts, I don't know that you can because that's kind of an automatic lawsuit, isn't it? They'll just sue and say, I want to, I want to be on it. It's, a, it's the same concept. I've had girls on our football team. So we didn't turn them down. They played football until they got tired of it and quit. Like any other player. Mm. So, one thing, so though, we didn't turn them down for a second reading. Is that yeah. what you wish? Yeah, yeah. Let's, we, yes, let's, let's find so someone to tell us what to think on that yeah, because right. I just don't understand what it's I get like. where they're coming from, but I'm just like, okay. What? 418 um, reflects um, marijuana is not legal in the state. And so um, it does reflect not on school property, those kinds of pieces that change because prior to that, that wasn't an issue. 419, it adds loose tobacco and tribal ritual exception. That's the only change on that. 424 license status adds annual report to Pelsby requirements. So we have a report now that we have to issue to under staff development, it adds for that eight, um, eight hours of paraprofessional paid orientation and professional development that we are now required to do. And tracks under really There's a ton of new bars codes coming out of this legislative. You have to track it separately? Yes. yes. Do we have lump it into here? It is. But no, you, you your business managers are going to be right. gonna, payroll appointments. They're making a new code for it so they oh. can track it separately. And then okay. it's going to become a pay and reimburse kind of system. Pay and reimburse. So we're going to have to pay it out in year one. We won't actually get funding for it until year two. Yeah. In special no. ed, you can well, let's get it. In uh, somebody always wants to ruin everything. <laughs> it's like, what? Pay it in year two, of course. Um, so I think the, the MSBA piece was very helpful. Are there others you'd like to... Um, you know, in student retention, they hadn't addressed gifted and talented provisions or early admissions very strongly before it was up to superintendent, I think. And so there's new language around that. The new one is new online. And the bullying added malicious and sadistic conduct prohibition. I'm guessing you're all in favor of that prohibition. Yeah. Oh, prohibition. Um, under use of peace officers, um, there are some differences now in the restrictive procedures law. And when they restrict a child in any way, we now have to report that as if it's a restrictive procedure. That will be new um, this year. And so um, that's why there's that reasonable force piece. Um, school meals policy that's updated um, to reflect the new free meals law. Um, E-learning days are now added to the organization of school calendar and school day. Six seventeen deleted the profile of learning. <laughs> now we have grads. Grad six thirteen grad requirements policy. Um, six twenty credit for learning. It removes online learning, and because of that, we have updated. Policy 624, new policy on online instruction. So 806 is interesting, and I was going to bring the language. So 806 is a policy about we can't do active shooter drills with students, okay? We're not going to, we don't do active shooter drills. We do lockdowns, oh, or yeah. we do, we, and there are many reasons why you might, you get a bomb threat, you mm -hmm. get a, you yep. have to do a lockdown, right. or you have to leave, so we do drills, 
we're never going to say we're doing an active shooter. We're going to pretend. I mean, I, I think that there were there were people concerned that, that we weren't protecting the mental health of our students during these processes. We are. Okay. I can tell you though that shootings in school are the number one fear of students right now. It it, mm -hmm. it it's really starting to impact them. So we need to do things to let them know they're safe. Um, we just attended an amazing training in Rochester, um, a reunification training last week with the um, City of Red Wing Police and the Goodhue County Sheriff's Department. And we're going to implement some of those procedures. They come out of Colorado um, and some parents that um, have lost students. One of the parents mm -hmm. I talked to us is, is, is a parent that lost, um, who, where was the first grade ship? Sandy Hook. Um, her um, her son was in that first grade classroom. And so um, it's very powerful, but just the language they use to help students and not create more angst for the students. It's a very powerful program. So we're going to look at implementing some of that information. Zambroda was there. I know that there was Zambroda people there, but I didn't hear the other districts. So Besides um, 102, are there others you want us to take to a second reading? We certainly can. And we could do all of them. Do you want to do all of them? Um, does our policy allow for straight up yes. approvals? Yes, we, have, we do have that policy. Okay. It's in the beginning of the policy manual. That is correct. Right. Policy 208. I don't know. If in the MSBA email, it said that these have the, because of the urgency of it, some of the things do have the ability to do it in one. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to make sure that we didn't have a conflicting policy. Sure. That, that yeah, was that's a great question. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I will make a motion that we approve these minus um, policy one to bring that back next month or so. I second. My bail will second by. Marilyn, any other questions or concerns about any of them? What are, what are we doing in the meantime about one of the two? Like, we're going to read it. Find somebody to really tell us what to think. Okay. Go find your best friend and, go, and what do you think us, this means? Yeah. And for us, that paragraph isn't um, as critical as the and rest the, of the policy, which right. we still have in place. Right. So the policy, the original 102 is still in place. This is, these are additional okay. pieces. So the fact that there's a new one doesn't dilute what you got. Because Correct. we don't run all the athletics. That right. We do. right, so that's more of a concern when this right. comes to our district. Right. So right. we're like, what does that mean? Well, so we can we'll have to explain to our boards. On our board. I gotta go find a lawyer. I got a lawyer on my board. I'm gonna go find him. I'll be like, help me. And that's why you have the policy people on your board. Well, there's other people doing that. Right. I'm not one. This year, there's <laughs> a sheer like, number of changes. Wow, so much that awesome. 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 Right. Well, and I think that this um, student parents, which um, student parents, yeah, that I can't remember where I saw it on here. It's a policy five hundred four. Five hundred four. Yes, that there are significant revisions to that. Um, so we did a first reading, but we didn't have the revisions yet, so we can't approve anything. But Wasn't it like hair shaming and stuff like that? Isn't that what right? I think it's more culturally. What does that mean? Just because it's coming out of my mouth. I heard about it on the news. Sometimes so. you, as board members, have to understand the policies. Right. So sometimes you just want to take the time to read it, have yep. a discussion about it before you approve it. Right. Even if it's written that right. way in the statute, right. you, when you're approving it, you need to be able to explain it to people and why that, it is. That takes some discussion. Right. And we did not get, I mean, what? I don't, I can't remember, you know, it was last night, but I do not recall that we had everything in. I don't think we had all the revisions in our policy. So we pulled that one off of the agenda because it wasn't done yet. So there was no point in discussing any of it because the MD didn't have it ready. But there's really no changes in ours, this one, correct? Because it's all new, the 504. But it's substantially revised. And there's not, there's hardly any 
Ed District is education is. They didn't redline it because uh, just like it says on five. Uh, I let's pull that one and I will check on that one. Yeah, because okay. yeah, I think like what well, you know. Um, yeah. Okay, so I, I so does someone want to make an amendment to that motion? I think we have to withdraw. Okay, I withdraw my motion because we're gonna yeah. pull it Thank out. you. Yeah, okay. I agree. Okay, all right, I will um, make a new motion approving the policies with pull, but pulling out 102 and 504. Mm -hmm. So you have that motion on the table. For the second, I'll second. Motion by Bailo, second by Marilyn. All right, any other questions or concerns about any of them? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, move on to no others. Um, Sherry, do you have any? We had an amazing superintendent's meeting today. Yeah, I wonder how that went. Um, <laughs> Where did that go? It yeah, I thought I was going to that meeting. We really do. I no, mean, I the, 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 they, it was fun. They they had a blast, um, and it was just amazing to see them already working together. So um, we went through an orientation to our um, agreements and our bylaws and our services, and it was a lot, but I gave them handouts. I went through the bills with them. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. What can I ask? What... Um, does Cassin do for right now? Are they in a co op? Yes, in Manorville? Yeah. Yes, they're in Zen. They're in Zen. They're Zen. Okay. Pine Island is the only one that isn't. And then St. Charles, I think, is getting out of Pine Island. Mm -hmm. um, um, St. Charles. Houston. Houston. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Island, Pine Island, this was their first, this past year was their first year as not part of Zen, correct? Yes. And with Tammy leaving. So I just wanted to report that went really well. It is unusual for us to have a superintendent meeting and board on the same date. Our practice is to have the superintendent a week before, so you have time to talk. With June schedules, it happens this way, but I want you to know that it's very unusual and it's not something we, we want to do. We want you to have time to get back. Okay, we did one sentence. How'd it go? Great. Anything I got about? No, thanks. <laughs> Great, then I'll show up with all my knowledge. Nothing. <laughs> Perfect. All right, we have um, any board reports? No? Okay. Well, our next meeting is Thursday, back to Thursday, July 27th here at 7 p.m. And uh, we have a motion to adjourn. So move a motion by Trees. Second by Bob. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion We're carries. looking for those talking points. I love those. Those are very helpful. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. And now yeah. I'm getting them. I know. Good. I need the talking points. So I sound smart. These are some of the words. 